When talking about the management of urinary symptoms with many men, I'm often asked the question, which treatment is best? It seems to me that many men out there are looking for the holy grail, which is the treatment that provides them the biggest symptomatic improvement, has the shortest hospital stay, and allows for the quickest return to normal activity. The challenge is that there is not one size that fits all. And every treatment that we look at when managing lower urinary tract symptoms related to an enlarged prostate does have a trade-off. In today's video, I wanted to have a deeper dive into a comparison between two different types of laser for managing enlarged prostates and symptoms that are caused by them. Those two treatments, one is green light laser prostatectomy and the other one is HOLEP. As always, if you get value from this video, please consider subscribing, give the video a thumbs up and leave your comments, questions, or share your journey of managing your urinary symptoms down in the comments section down below. We found historically it makes a big difference when men share their experiences. Traditionally, we as men tend not to be great at discussing issues that we may have. Before we get into a comparison about green light versus HOLEP, a little bit of background just to touch on. So BPH is the benign enlargement of the prostate. It becomes more common as men progress through life. Approximately 50% of men in their 50s and 60s have got an enlarged prostate and urinary symptoms related to that. And by the time we get to men in their 80s, around 70 to 80% of men will have urinary issues related to BPH. What we do about that depends very much on how bothersome men find it. Certainly, if there are no complications from the enlargement and men find the issue minimally bothersome, there's no real need for us to do anything about it. If, however, men have significant symptoms that are causing them to get up at night to pee, it takes them a while to actually pee and empty their bladder and they're rushing to the toilet in the day and they're looking for a definitive solution, that's when a discussion with a urologist about the pros and cons of the different pathways really comes into play. So BPH is the benign enlargement to the prostate. It results in progressive obstruction to the bladder. The prostate, as you may recall from some of our previous videos, the prostate sits underneath the bladder. It's shaped like a donut and we pee through a tube in the middle called the urethra. As the prostate grows, it causes progressive obstruction and men tend to notice a slower stream. And with time, there can be bladder changes that results in increased frequency of urination, sometimes rushing to the toilet and getting up at night to pee, which obviously results in uh, men becoming tired and cranky. All right, so let's look at green light laser. So with lasers, in essence, lasers are basically um, focused, it's a focused uh, beam of light, and the properties of that laser are going to be dependent upon the particular wavelength. And without getting too technical, the wavelength will really guide us as to whether or not we have uh, an energy source that is poorly absorbed by water and maximally absorbed by prostate tissue, or whether or not we have a laser which results in a more cutting fashion and is absorbed in water. So different properties of laser. With green light, the wavelength is 532 nanometers. It basically means that the laser energy is poorly absorbed by water and we can transmit in a very efficient way energy through a fiber into the prostate. Green light is used in a couple of different ways. It can be used in its traditional form, which is to say that we vaporize tissue. Effectively, we put high energy into the prostate, we turn it from solid to gas, and we remove the overgrown tissue. One of the advantages to this uh, approach is that the depth of penetration of the heat is minimal, it's less than a millimeter, and as it removes tissue, it also coagulates or seals off blood vessels underneath. One of the real advantages to green light is that there's a, a, a lower risk of bleeding, and B, when you've got a lower depth of penetration of energy, the probability of damaging or interfering with the erectile nerves is also less. Green light can also be used in, as a tool to enucle enucleate tissue. What I mean by that is that there are two key areas to think about inside the prostate. There's the middle part, which is called the transition zone. It's the transition zone that gets bigger as men get older, and that's what puts pressure on the pipe. So we have the transition zone in the middle, 
and we have the peripheral zone, which is near the shell of the prostate. The peripheral zone is where we tend to see the majority of prostate cancers. Enucleation basically is a surgical technique that aims to try and find the junction between the middle bit and the outer bit, the transition zone and the peripheral zone, and to facilitate peeling away that overgrown tissue to remove basically the whole overgrown lump. That's the difference between those two approaches. Following green light laser, the majority of men are catheterized, i.e. they have a tube through the penis into the bladder, and for most that catheter really needs to stay in only overnight. The majority of my patients head home the next day without a catheter. If men have chronic retention of urine, i.e. they have long-standing obstruction to their bladder, they've been poorly emptying their bladder for a long period of time and they may have several hundred mils left in their bladder when they actually think they're empty, those men do actually require an additional period of catheterization to allow the bladder really to rest and recover to try and improve the possibility that they pee following catheter removal and everything begins to settle down. Let's have a look at HOLEP. HOLEP is a different type of laser. The wavelength for HOLMIUM, and HOLEP stands for HOLMIUM Enucleation of Prostate. So it's an enucleative uh, technique. The HOLMIUM laser, as I said, is 2,100 nanometers. It is absorbed by water in contrast to the green light. And the way that it operates really is more of a cutting tool. The aim of HOLEP is to try and find that boundary between the middle part, the transition zone and the peripheral zone, and to peel away the overgrown tissue. When we're looking at which one is best, it obviously depends on how we define best. And the way that we do that really is by looking at outcome measures. Historically, the determinant of whether or not a treatment is efficacious, if a treatment is good, is really how much tissue do we remove and how durable is the improvement that we get from that particular treatment. The trade-off when we go really from minimally invasive all the way up the spectrum to more maximally invasive treatments is that at the maximal end of the spectrum, we remove more tissue, the treatment is more durable, but the, the price that you potentially pay for that are changes in ejaculation and changes in erectile function. So for many men, when faced with this dilemma of which choice to pursue, it really comes down to a bit of a trade-off between durability and compromise on sexual function. If we look at it from a clinical point of view, for example, a younger man with urinary issues and a big prostate who's more sexually active may choose a more minimally invasive treatment so that he can preserve erections and ejaculation, but he accepts that he will require another treatment at some stage in the future, most likely. Whereas an older man, for example, who has significant obstruction, really wants definitive unobstruction to his bladder. He wants the biggest improvement in his voiding function that's really going to see him through, and he doesn't mind so much compromising on sexual uh, side effects. <clears throat> if we look at short-term recovery, it appears that green light provides a more rapid return to normal activity and that hospital stays can be shorter and that the probability of bleeding related side effects can be less when we look at green light. HOLEP does offer the potential advantage to removing more tissue, which arguably could provide a more durable uh, outcome, but comes at the cost of potentially increased bleeding and a longer convalescence. If we look at the techniques themselves, so beyond the technology itself, there is the surgical application of that skill. And certainly in nucleation is a more challenging procedure for surgeons to become familiar with. And if you look at some of the early data when surgeons are acquiring this skill set, it appears that the risk of urinary incontinence is greater with HOLEP than compared to green light. From a sexual function point of view, with both of these approaches, the risk of erectile dysfunction is at the lower end of the spectrum, but both are associated with a high probability of ejaculatory changes. 
Should men wish to preserve at all cost ejaculatory function, then really attention needs to be shifted towards looking at more minimally invasive treatment choices, such as ITIND, RESM, or potentially Urolift. One of the differences between the two is that with HOLEP there is tissue that, that is removed, whereas with the majority of people that perform green light, there is actually no tissue uh, to be able to send to pathology. Now, an argument that was used a couple of decades ago when urologists were shifting away from doing the TURP operation and focusing more on laser alternatives was this absence of tissue. So we didn't know if men had cancer within the transition zone. It should be noted in contemporary practice that if we're worried about the risk of prostate cancer, then men tend to be evaluated with an MRI scan before they come to treatment so that we know that the risk of an abnormality is at the lower end of the spectrum. In addition to that, the majority of prostate cancers actually occur in the outer part of the prostate near the shell, not in that central part, which is the, the, the area of the prostate which is treated when we're managing urinary symptoms related to BPH. So which one is best? Well, ultimately it will come down to a personal preference. Where do you place the priority? Do you want maximally durable treatment at the potential cost of a, sh a longer convalescence and potentially a greater risk of bleeding side effects? Or would, or would you accept that at 10 years you have a 10% risk of recurrence of urinary symptoms with green light, uh, but you are prepared to accept this at the price of a shorter hospital stay, a shorter convalescent period, a quicker return to new, a quicker return to normal activity, and a lower probability of bleeding related side effects. To sum up, in essence, both treatments are very effective at unobstructing a prostate, and which treatment you choose ultimately will come down to a balance between what is available locally what is the skill of a particular surgeon offering that technique? Is he or she new to that technique or have they done hundreds if not thousands of that procedure? Please let me know what you think. Have you had a HOLEP or have you had a green light? Please, I'd love to know your experience. Please share it in the comments section down below. Until the next video, take care of your prostate.